There you are in the great wide open when you hear it. Dinner time. When you're hungry, you're not going to let 5,000 feet of mountain get in your way. And if they try, that's what Kia's lineup of exceptionally capable SUVs with available all-wheel drive is for. The Telluride, Sorento, Sportage, and Seltos are how you know we take this pretty seriously. The SUVs and the dinner. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. Kia, movement that inspires. Visit Kia.com for details. Always drive safely. School is back and doorbusters are in session at JCPenney. Score best-in-class deals for your whole crew like $6.99 tees and $21.99 denim from Arizona Jean Company. Spice up your new space with Cook's Kitchen Essentials starting at $19.99. Hurry in store while they last or buy online now, pick up curbside later. Shopping is back and the savings are too. JCPenney. Doorbusters valid on select styles through 83. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Do it. Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing. We have a breaking news update. The Loch Ness Monster. Plausibly undeniable. Uh, You heard that right. Um, Today, scientists have come out and said the existence of the Loch Ness Monster um, has been (laughs) on the meter of hoax to real. uh, It's been moved from hoax to plausible. Um, and it just goes to show you that scientists are wrong and all the time, all the time. Absolutely. And, and we should never believe them. That's pretty cool though, man. Like, so apparently they found, um, a plesiosaur fossil on an ancient African riverbed, which kind of goes to say that there's a possibility that, you know, these, these river or these, these monsters, these plesiosaurs, which could potentially like, that's pretty much the closest, you know, we have to what we've de- depicted the Loch Ness monster, right? Like that's yeah, the the small head, the long the long neck, flippers, the, the big body. Yeah, like that's um, it's the closest. It meets the the description the closest. And now, like we we potentially have proof that the they could have existed in fresh water. And and that was a big point of contention. They said that this this kind of um, species that you know what a lot of people have said the Loch Ness monster would be. Um, would have been not kicked around freshwater. It would have been strictly in the sea. Uh, so now finding this thing that, you know, it's freshwater. But it, it to me, I've always thought like, you know, it, it's always kind of a bold claim that you would just say like, absolutely not. Like you take a hard stance on that because like even like seals, like we have seals, saltwater seals that, you know, when the salmon are running here where I'm from, We'll swim way the fuck up a freshwater river to try to get them. absolutely like that. Right? D- it depends on like what are they driven? Are they driven for food? Whatever? Or you know, there's a possibility that maybe it can tolerate both. Right? Exactly. Right? Like, and and so like you know here here's where I'm saying like you know perhaps back in the day in you know some sort of cataclysmic flood or something like these things allegedly you know the plesiosaurus they say died out 66 million years ago, but that's just the guess, right? But these things existed with crocodiles, and I think I'm pretty sure that crocodiles still exist. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's right? a safe assumption. I think so. I think that's, I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. I'm not a scientist, but I think we can well, make that. Fine. Scientists are wrong. We know this. We've already proved um, it. But my thing is, like, you know, if there was high waters or high rivers and one, if these things would regularly swim into areas where, you know, say like salmon or or you know, something back in the day that would go from saltwater to freshwater for spawning or something like that. Perhaps what that's what these things did, similar to salmon migration, right? We don't we don't really know a hundred percent, right? So m- maybe like actually I never even thought about that. Maybe this is one of those like salmon spawning things where these things would the trek, you know, when they were born, they're little, they can swim into the salt water, then they get big and they have to make these epic treks back to these freshwater lakes where they uh, give birth. Yeah, could very well be. And you know what the other thing is? I'm like the other thing that I'm thinking is like, man, have you ever like seen what like the changes a salmon goes through? It, like the changes yeah, they're literally like they're, from they're literally a fucking they, Pokemon. 
They yeah, evolve. They evolve. Yeah, yeah, literally. It's crazy. Yeah, it's wild, man. To look like something not in, like entirely different in a short amount of time. Ugly so bastards. My thing, yeah, Ugly so maybe, bastards at the end. So maybe, like, you know, this makes the the idea that um, something like this could have lived in a freshwater lake. But te- you know, specifically plausible. the Scottish lock. Yeah. Now, so we all know the, you know, Nessie is, it's a Scottish folklore. Um, it's been, you know, it, it, it's been around for I th- probably a lot longer than 1933. Um, but it was 1933 when it gained worldwide attention because of the, um, the surgeon's photograph. And that's the the famous photograph we've all seen of Nessie, the shadowy f- um, photograph. But like there's, um, you know, there's been sightings all, you know, forever throughout his people thinking they catching a glimpse. And even in our hometown in Okanagan, there is a, you know, a rumored sea creature. And if you, I, I've always thought- If you want to learn more about it, there's a great episode on uh, the Mike Tyson Mysteries, teaches all about it. Well, and we also have a couple episodes. We have a couple episodes on, uh, no, we have uh, episodes on uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash alien theorists. Uh, it's I think it's just Ogo Pogos, and because there's there's lots of different Pogos and lake monsters around North America, I think we did a dedicated case file on that, and we've also done a dedicated case file on Loch Ness monster. So if you want to uh, check out that, look back in our catalog. The interesting thing, though, that I'm that I keep like looking into is that like we 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 don't know, like if these things existed sixty like they died off sixty six million years ago, you know. Again, it, this thing was living with crocodiles, which are still around. So why not a small group? Like maybe they went extinct and it took them a long time. Maybe these things live for a long time. Like we have turtles that live hundreds of years, right? We we, we still have dinosaurs, dude. We we still right. You, go ahead and try and fucking tell me a Komodo dragon isn't a dinosaur. I just yeah, watched one eat a deer today on fucking on Twitter. Like with one bite. Yeah. Right. So it's it, my thing is I'm like, you know, perhaps, perhaps if these things live long enough with a good enough food source uh, in an area, perhaps they can live a lot longer. And I'm not saying that Nessie is 66 million years, but, you know, a lot of people have, because uh, the Loch Ness, like, it's, it's one of those bottomless lakes, much like the Okanagan Lake, um, that people have thought that maybe there is some sort of channels to get to. Uh, you know, to get from to connecting Okanagan ocean. Lake to a uh, lock, you know, yeah. like, and also think too, like if this thing has been a lo- around that long, it's had to evolve to stay alive. Right. And it makes you wonder, like maybe it's got some type of fucking camouflaging, like, you know, the octopuses that we talked about, right? Like maybe yeah. it's evolved to stay undetected. Part of me too is um, part of me have always thought this too. I, I had a thought. It's like if you've ever had a goldfish, right? Your goldfish will only grow as big as the tank allows it to grow. Yeah, but right? but on and the if you get outside, a bigger tank, yeah, it'll grow huge. On the it'll grow huge, right? So it's like these things maybe in the open ocean and stuff will get massive, right? Like in the salt water on a different diet, it allows for these things to just their growth rate to explode, but perhaps in a lake. And again, I'm no marine biologist. So, you know, don't be, don't be hating on me for my little knowledge of marine biology, but perhaps these, one of these things living in like a lake scenario would be a lot smaller than say it's, it's seafaring, right? Companion or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. But at the same time, like, you know, I, it's not as big as the sea, but that's fucking like, look at Okanagan Lake for an instant. You could fit a big fucking, big fucker in the Okanagan Lake. Like there's a yes, lot yes. of room, right? There, yeah, 100%. And like, I'd, I'd imagine like, we've got pretty big con- a sturgeon compared to most, right? But w- what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but what I'm saying is, maybe the first ones that came into like the, uh, it, what's the, is the lake actually called Loch? What's the region, Loch Ness? Well, it's the Loch Ness region. I don't know what the lake's called. But say that fresh water, the body of water, say they were in there, right? And then were trapped in there, but had more than enough food and stuff survived because there was still, you know, 
uh, food supplies coming into spawn and stuff. So they actually had it. There was enough to supply whatever was left in this pond, basically this fresh body water. So they were having babies, but because of the receding water and stuff, their ability to grow just got smaller and smaller. So like, do you know what I mean? Like, so like as the, you know, the parents died out and the grandparents, like the babies and stuff didn't grow to as vast size as their, as their parents had. I guess. So lock means lake and it's so yeah. nest lake. Oh, nest yeah. lake. Okay. That makes sense. I don't know why. Right? I don't but, know why they got to go a fucking Yoda on us with it, but you know. yeah, just call it Lake Ness. Uh, are we sure it's even Lockers? Are they trying to say Lake and that's just their accent? Yeah, probably a little bit of both. Right. But it, it's, um, you know, this has been, it's been blowing up on social media. It's been blowing up uh, everywhere because it makes the idea of what people are seeing and what people describe when they say they see Nessie. Like the, the biggest hurdle right now is that these things supposedly died 66 million years ago. Right. But all we're saying is there's a chance. There's a hundred percent chance. And then if you, if you're looking at, if you're looking at these things that like, you know, we're with Gobeki Tepe, we're, we're making new discoveries that are just changing everything we know all the time. Um, you know, we don't know a lot about the open ocean. We don't know a lot about the deep sea. There's still tons of mysteries to unravel. There's still, you know, giant squids were just myth uh, until recently. You, you know what I mean? Till some were caught on camera. But it, it's an it's, it's an interesting thing because it makes me wonder if you have these people, and it's not like in 1933. You know what I mean? The, someone would have had uh, been like, "Hey, that's a plesiosaurus. That's what I'm going to base this off of." You know what I mean? When was the first plesiosaurus found? Question. Right? That's that's be an interesting question to me because then I, I just wonder if it gives credence, like, wow, wow. The first complete skeleton of a plesiosaur was uh found in 1823. Oh wow, really? Right? Holy shit. Yeah, that's pretty that's that pretty crazy. It goes with what I was saying, fucking a couple case our last case following us that was easier to find dinosaur bones back then. Yeah, it's fucking, fucking easy, boys. They're everywhere. Yeah, you just dig a hole, yeah, they're everywhere. Fucking... Uh, Mary Anning found it uh, in the Lyme Regis uh, Dorset. Yeah. I don't know where that oh, is. Oh, yeah. I know all about it. Yeah, yeah, Lyme, big Lyme Regis fan. Yeah. <laughs> you vacay there yeah. in the, oh, in the yeah. spring? Um, so, you know, that kind of blows my theory out of the water a little bit. Because, But how in 1933, how widely known what a plesiosaur would have been and how widely... Uh, pictures would have been distributed of them. I'll question that. So it's like, even if that first one's a hoax, right? That first one sets the tone of like, that's what that is. And people started putting that together that perhaps it's some sort of plesiosaur. And I don't think that this is people saying that this is a plesiosaur. Loch Ness, Ness is a plesiosaur. Maybe it's a descendant Absolutely. of a plesiosaur, right? And it's, you know, perhaps it was the last one, right? And who knows? I don't, I'm not sure, but... um. Right, maybe it just lurks at the bottom of the lake, just sitting there, sucking back on uh, pond scum. Well, that's what it lives off of, and beer cans floating to the bottom, and the odd uh, Scottishman. Yeah, well, and that's that's the other thing, right? They do say that's the legend, right? It's a, and the same with the Ogopogo, right? So it's it's interesting that um, it, it'd be interesting to find. I, I remember they found like those giant. Was that a hoax back in the day when they found the giant skeleton? Remember they found, said they found the giant skeleton in Okanagan Lake? They didn't find a skeleton. They found the, remember the, the, there was like a sculpture, actually Ogopogo sculpture at the bottom of the lake. Oh, yes. Yes. Right? And like, if you go diving, you can find it near the Okanagan Bridge. Yeah. In the murky. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah. That shit my pants. Murky water. But it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's interesting it's really interesting that these things now, we now know that, you know, they were going into freshwater for, for what reasons we don't know. Uh, we don't know that yet. This is, this is breaking discovery that we found these things that is basically saying like, okay, well, we kind of got to rewrite what we think we knew about them because if they're going into freshwater, we need to figure out, like figure out why they're doing that. Why were they doing that? Was it for food sources? Was it for mating? Was it just 
for shits and giggles. They would just go in there. How long could they survive in there? I mean, in, like for me, as at this point going forward, I have to think that it was potentially looking for food, looking for prey, whatever, because I feel like you would have found more by now in these potential freshwater areas, right? If it was, if this was a place where it went to spawn or whatever, right? Because that's an essential that like that would be an essential part of its life. Whereas you know our particular plesiosaurus, maybe it was, you know, maybe it wasn't eating, maybe it was starving, maybe it got caught up in the chase, ended well, up going into a fresh river source. Here's the thing: there wasn't just one found, right? They found they found bones and teeth from a three meter long adult. How far? How's th- how big is three meters? Twelve feet. Fucking, fucking big. big ass. I don't big know, boy. Uh, Too big boy. Yeah, that's a big boy. Too big boy. Uh, but they also found an arm boy. An arm, <laughs> arm boy. They also found an arm bone of a 1.5 meter long baby. Oh, I didn't know that. Right? So half the size. Okay. Right? So they had a baby with it. So oh, I, so yeah, part maybe. Of, right? Maybe it's one. Maybe they give birth there and then they raise raise the young there for a while before they take them into the into the sea, right? Like a, like a, you know, like a, like a salmon of some kind, right? Go and give birth. They raise it in the fresh water and then they bring it to the ocean. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, um, you know, we kind of uncover with that. The issue, the interesting thing was, was that um, the, t- so the teeth of the adult were grounded down. And this is pretty common, I guess, because um, there was another, there's another like, um, water dwelling dinosaur called the Spinosaurus. And uh, they determined that the Spinosaurus would have heavy wear on its teeth because it, it would eat an armored fish that lived around the, like the, the river area. And they were so heavily armored that over time, these things would just slowly wear down their teeth, chewing through the armor. Uh, and, the plesiosaur that they found is, I hope I'm saying that right. Plesiosaur yeah. sounds, uh, had the same wear marks. So they're just basically determining that like, it was obviously eating the same armored fish that lived in this area, right? Like as a food source because of the, of the teeth grinding. So it's, it's like, obviously it, it's interesting. Cause it's like, if this is if this armored fish, I'd like to. I wish the article said more about this armored fish because I'd like to know more about it. Because like, was this a freshwater f- fish exclusively, or did this thing travel uh, between saltwater and freshwater? Because knowing that information about that, if that's also found in saltwater, then we can start to kind of suss out why exactly the uh, Nessie would be going to these freshwater locations. Placodermy. Placod- Placodermy. Placodermy. Is that what it's called? I believe so. This episode of Alien Theorist Theorizing is brought to you by the Dave app. It's Monday night and you're strapped for cash, but you want to get Mitra drunk and talk conspiracies with your friends. Well, now you can with the help of Dave. Sometimes it happens like this. You're getting ready for your evening podcast recording session. And the thing is, while you're setting up, you drop your mic. It's fried. It's busted. You need a new one. You got to get ready to record. So you go out and you buy a new one. But the thing is, your friend's wedding is next weekend and you haven't bought a gift yet. Well, that's where Dave comes in. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy guitar strings, buy that wedding gift, or just catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need when they need it with extra cash. If you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Future you will thank you. There you are in the great wide open when you hear it. Dinner time. When you're hungry, you're not going to let 5,000 feet of mountain get in your way. And if they try, that's what Kia's lineup of exceptionally capable SUVs with available all-wheel drive is for. 
The Telluride, Sorrento, Sportage, and Seltos are how you know we take this pretty seriously. The SUVs and the dinner. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. Kia, movement that inspires. Visit Kia.com for details. Always drive safely. Yeah. It's kind of... It, 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 that would be interesting to find out. Because then if it's like, if this is freshwater only then I don't think the plesiosaur is going in for food. It's going in for spawning, I would think. And then just happen, happening to eat what's there. But like if this if this armored fish also does that, perhaps it's following this thing in during a spot, like during spawning. That's what that's kind of where my brain would go to on this. What are you pulling up here? Got some? Trying to find out if it's a freshwater fish or not. I'm not quite Jamie yet. Oh, yeah, it have been. Yeah, it has been found in freshwater habitats. So it's salt. So it's it could be both. Ocean. It could be. I think it's both. Right, it could be doing the same thing, yeah. right? Hmm, interesting. So I then, mean, why? Who are we to say that these these creatures couldn't tolerate both? We have no fucking clue. That's true. Well, we don't. Um, there might be some smarter people out there. But like, there's been tons of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's been at least you know twelve studies into Nessie and expeditions to try to find um, the Loch Ness monster, um, including like Operation Deep Scan from 1987. Um, and these things like you know really haven't turned up a lot. Um, the, I remember the the sonar from the Operation Deep Scan. The guy uh, Lawrence said uh, one of the things that he said was, "There's something here that we don't understand, and there's something here that's larger than a fish. Maybe some species that hasn't been detected before, but I don't know." Uh, and you know, with this, the Lawrence electrons, they found that they like they did. Find indicate like their their depth sonar, sonar uh, found a large moving object at a depth of five hundred and ninety feet. So, so in, what you're telling me is they found Nessie. Well, they don't know. No, right? no, no. Like they they, found, like, come on, they come found on. Nessie. Yeah, we got photo evidence. What else do we need? We got skeletons now. What else do you need? Yeah, um, open and close case. But they also like okay in Loch Ness. They like seals also get in there, right? From the ocean, so it's 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 possible. Like, why why are we? Is it not possible? I guess I would have to look at the lay of the land a little better in that area. But like, is it not possible that like Nessie might just come in for a hey, how are you, and well, then back out to the ocean? Everything I'm reading, like, so I, I read up on this plesiodermy. I read up on a mos on the mosasaurus as well, which is that other large prehistoric. Yeah, uh, reptile mam or reptile fish, whatever the fuck they call them. Um, and each one of these write-ups says they probably lived in both fresh and seawater. Right? So it's it's by the sounds of yeah. most of these prehistoric sweet sea dwelling creatures tolerated fresh water as well. Yeah. Right? So why would it be like a that just makes sense for the plesiosaurus as well? Yeah, I I hundred percent agree. Like it would it just now is there a possible like do you think there's a possibility that there's you know maybe is there some smaller ones how big is three meters that's what i need to find out first three meters in feet i think it's like i think it's 12 feet it's only nine feet yeah so it's not that's huge. not a, that's not that that's a okay that's a big that's a big water creature right like if something was you were swimming and something swam by you nine feet. You'd be like, "Oh, that was what was that?" I'm out of here. But like, let's be real we here. Had, That's we not have that sturgeons big. that are that big, right? Exactly, right. So it's like you know, people saying that like this is not a possibility. I'm like, okay, well, if there's listen, there's more water on this planet than there is land. If there's not a lot of these things left, if there's not a lot left, maybe it makes their sightings rare. Right? There's there's tons of rare mammals and stuff that are are so rarely seen right but we've caught them on camera so we know they exist but it, it, you know to say that this is an absolute impossibility to me is i'm like i think it's a bold stance and i think because at, 
at some point I would, I believe some of the people that say they've seen something, right? And they're like, I've, it looked like this. I don't know why. Maybe there is a couple, a handful floating around, right? Maybe there's not a breeding pair anymore. Maybe they've all died out since 1933 and it's one of the extinctions that's happened here, right? But um, to maybe, just count it off and be like, there, there wasn't a, ch- I, there's not a chance. I think she's just, I think, I think Nessie's just vacationing in the Okanagan now. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Well, I mean, took one of those tunnels. Why would you leave? Come on. Yeah, Beautiful. But area. like a nine, nine foot creature, like that's, I mean, if there was a nine foot creature in Okanagan Lake, there is, there's sturgeons. Yeah, For sure. How is. often have you ever, we know there's sturgeons I, at the bottom I of the lake. I have once when I was a kid. You've seen yeah. one? Hundred percent, right? Yes, scared the shit out of me. How how big was it? Humongous. I, it, to me at the time, I was I was probably like twelve. Yeah, and it was, Tom, it was. Give me the give me the rundown of the story here. I was fucking on a dock, and this giant fucking thing swam under the dock, and I freaked the fuck out. That's the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, and it's like it's nine feet. Now imagine like like a plesiosaur could do the same thing, just be lurking on the bottom, like someone catches a glimpse of it and is like, I think I saw some serpent thing, right? But it would appear like a serpent thing from because of its long neck under the water, right? I imagine it would look like serpentine. Now, I'm not saying the Ogopogo is uh, is a plesiosaur as well because most depictions of that is a long serpent-like creature. Um, but for some reason, when I was thinking these things, I was thinking them as being absolutely monstrous. I wonder how big the biggest one I ever found is. Well I'm, I, well, I'm pretty sure mosasauruses are bigger. This is source. All right. I want to. I want to find. Like they're actually not that big, man. Like the ones I'm looking at, not that big. Um, It grew to 3.5 meters. So that's, that's not, that's not a ridiculous. I don't know why I thought these things were humongous. I always had an, this like it in my head that these things were just like gigantic. That's only 11 feet. Yeah. That's, I don't know if that's tip to tip. It right? must be. Why that would be right. But then that's not, that's not that big because if you think 11 feet and think about how long that neck is, right. Like that's that's not that big for like when people say like oh there's not it yeah 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 it's yeah that I, tip to tip I think the mosasaurus is like ten meters yeah so it's to me I'm like that doesn't seem unbelievable that one of these things could hide it's not that big right no. and if it doesn't surface if it doesn't need to surface if it if it's not if it's not a creature that doesn't need to come up for air and it can live a hundred percent underwater. Why would you see it? Right. Especially if it's a rare creature. Well, yeah. And especially if it's been around this long, you got to imagine it's developed some type of fucking camouflage. Some type well, of, like to, to keep it safe. Right. Like you, think well, of, maybe it's nocturnal, right? Like, um, I I've had fish tanks and like had some stuff like coolie loaches and coolie loaches look like little serpents, right? The little serpent fish fishes. And they they lay in the in the rocks and they just wiggle until they bury themselves and you never see them. The only time I ever see them is when you first flick on the light in the morning and they're going crazy, being like, get me the fuck out of the light. And then they go and bury themselves and then they don't come out for the day. Like they completely go, they're only come out at night. Like maybe this that's something that these things did. Like they were more of a nocturnal, like that's when they hunted their prey, well, right? You, maybe they go sit in the mud. During the day, right? Low low level, keep the body temperature nice and cool. And then they only come out at night. Well, and you're not going to see anything in the night. The no. Way. No way. Nothing. Right? Especially if this thing doesn't need to breach like a whale. Like why? Like how often would you see it? Right? By chance. Right? By chance. It would just strictly be a by chance thing. So I don't know. It's, um, it's going to be really interesting to see what comes of this and uh, as we learn more about the plesiosaurus and if this is potentially Nessie, I, I, I was wondering how big people have estimated Nessie. At. How big's the Loch Ness monster? Cause I wonder if like, if, if people are saying it's around, they think it's around the same, how big is the Loch Ness monster? Because 
No one, it doesn't really say. But it's hard to say because people just see the head really. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's my thing, man. Like that's not a big, that's not a big serpent. I think, I think one of these things could easily uh, live undetected. Especially if it's nocturnal. So it, it's going to be interesting to see as we learn more and more about dinosaurs and there's breakthroughs in these studies and there's, uh, you know, scientific discoveries that push the boundaries of our knowledge and how we understand things. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. And obviously, um, if anyone can find one of these things, if, if anyone gets, you know, with the advantages of CCTV getting better and better all the time and, um, HD cameras, you know, perhaps someone might catch ahead of one of these things, uh, kicking around and we'll all go, Hey, these things, there's a, we know at least there's a couple still around and they're rare. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. Well, we'll obviously, you know, keep following up on this story, uh, as we find out, but what are your last thoughts, Andrew? I think it's awesome. I like the potential. Um, and I'm excited to hear more about it. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's another breaking news segment from you, uh, for us. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll always try to bring you the breaking news when it comes and it pertains to the conspiracy, cryptid, paranormal, uh, UFO world. Um, you know, it's always interesting and we like to get it to you guys right away. If you like this, uh, let us know. Shoot us a message. Um, we kind of take this show based on where the fans want us to take it. So if you like this kind of stuff, we will keep doing it. But if we don't get feedback, we don't hear from it, we hear, hear about it, uh, sometimes it kind of falls off. So we've got some good feedback on... The Bigfoot, which unfortunately turned out to be a hoax by the scumbag Coyote Peterson, and some good feedback on the Georgia Guidestones, which uh, we're still learning more and more about. Uh, But anyways, that's it for us today. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. School is back and doorbusters are in session at JCPenney. Score best-in-class deals for your whole crew like $6.99 tees and $21.99 denim from Arizona Jean Company. Spice up your new space with Cook's Kitchen Essentials starting at $19.99. Hurry in store while they last or buy online now, pick up curbside later. Shopping is back and the savings are too. JCPenney. Doorbusters valid on select styles through 8-3. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Do it. The General Insurance presents Shower Ballads by Shaq. And I'm gonna keep my mouth in you Cause it's the only thing I wanna do Turns out, everyone does sound better in the shower. And it turns out, The General is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. I just wanna keep on you For a great low rate and nearly 60 years of quality coverage, make the right call and go with The General. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply.